So obviously gift giving is a big part of Christmas, but how on earth did that become a thing? I might want to blame it on the commercialism of the last couple of hundred years, but as we dig into the traditions and the history, giving of gifts around this time of year has been an important thing for a lot of cultures over a lot of time. So let's jump in. Hi friends, my name is Greg Simpson. I'm a minister in the United Church of Canada. And for this series, we're looking at some of the special things around Advent and Christmas, digging into their history, figuring out where they came from, and wondering why they're still relevant for us today. I am surrounded by gifts and packages all wrapped up, and this is one of the most ubiquitous symbols of Christmas. But why do we give gifts? One of the traditions must come from this ancient story of the Magi who came to visit Jesus early in his life. And if you remember correctly, they gave gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And if you've been at a church around the holiday season, I'm sure you have heard some minister talk about the meanings behind those particular gifts. And we might do that a little bit later, but today I'm looking at the bigger scope of why we even bother to give gifts. Because there's this beautiful and really interesting trajectory from 2,000 years ago to today. And frankincense, myrrh, and gold are not the only ones that are involved in this conversation. If we go about 500 years before Jesus' birth, the celebration of Saturnalia was an important part of the Roman traditions of the time. It was a celebration that addressed the end of their harvest season, and it started sometime around modern day, December 17th, and over the centuries expanded out to be about a week-long thing that went from the 17th to the 23rd. And it was a time of celebration and revelry, lots of overeating and over over drinking and giving of gifts. There are even some interesting situations where people would swap roles. Some of it is that masters and slaves would swap roles. And there's this interesting idea of freedom of speech. Rome was a very rigid society with a fixed caste system that said, you at this layer were only allowed to talk to people at this layer in certain circumstances. But during Saturnalia, that was sort of lifted and it gave a chance for people to talk to and about and and with perhaps their superiors, whether that be in their family or in the societal structure or maybe even their employment, and it built this community feeling. I think some of that still exists today. We might not have the same levels of caste system, but there's absolutely a feeling of revelry and togetherness, and along with it comes some gift giving. Back then, the gifts were mostly small but meaningful. It might be something like a candle or a figurine made of wax or clay. And there was revelry and houses were decorated with wreaths and greenery. You can see that there are lots of those traditions that survive today. But that, again, was a long time ago. What I enjoy about the research is that there's nothing that absolutely confirms or denies that the Saturnalia celebrations and gift giving gave rise to the Christian celebrations and gift giving around Christmas. I think we'd be lying to ourselves if we said there's no possible way that that could be the case. But then it would also be disingenuous for us to claim that the only way any celebration can be legitimate is if it was created brand new whole cloth from a totally new idea. We as humans mold and evolve. We borrow things from different people and different cultures. We've done that forever. In fact, today's celebrations of Christmas are quite different from 500 years ago or 1500 years ago, let alone way back in the days of Saturnalia. We we evolve and we grow, and I love that that encourages us to see the diversity of what our neighbors may or may not celebrate. It doesn't make mine better than yours or yours better than mine. In fact, it gives me room to appreciate that the way you celebrate is meaningful for you, and I might even learn a certain something about some of your traditions. It's hard for us to think about gifts without imagining them being delivered by a jolly man in a red suit and a long white beard, but 
How did Santa Claus come to be? And are there any Christian connections to Santa Claus? And can we tie together the giving of gifts from the Magi with a guy who drops down the chimney? Well, you've got to come with me on a bit of a journey because it is a circuitous route, but indeed there is a real person named Saint Nicholas if we go back far enough. Now, we're talking like third century after Jesus' birth, but Nicholas was a real man, born in a city named Paterna, which is now in modern day Turkey. He was born to a wealthy family. He was very involved in the early Christian church. In fact, he became a bishop, and in that role, he was influential in some of the early trappings of the brand new Christian faith. Now, it's not like he said, you know what? We should give gifts, and you should name them after me. In fact, he was the sort of person who lived out his faith as much as he talked about it. And he is very, very well known for extremely generous gifts. There's this very interesting story where he paid the dowry for three different women who were extremely poor and would never have been married without taking credit for it all he did was threw bags of gold through their windows so that they had enough gold to be married off now I don't want to sit for too long with what that means in a patriarchal society and how icky that seems to us today, but this was a man who gave generously. There are so many stories about his giving, and I invite you to do your own research. Some of them are extremely heartwarming. Well, that idea of giving on behalf of St. Nicholas grew into a common tradition in early December throughout the Christian church in like the 6th, 7th, 8th century. These traditions blossomed in Europe, and sometimes Sometimes they would even talk about St. Nicholas appearing in town and bringing gifts. In the Netherlands, his name was transliterated into Sinterklaas, and I apologize to any of you with Dutch roots if I've done a poor job of translating that name. But when Dutch immigrants came to North America, then they brought Sinterklaas with them, who then became Santa Claus. But we're talking about 1,700 years of tradition that shaped and grew and evolved as it went. And of course, you don't have to look in any history books to see that it has become a commercial success. Many retail corporations make a large portion of their profits in the last couple of months of the year in their lead up to Christmas. And I know lots of people lament that this beautiful and generous tradition has grown into something that seems to be only for driving profits and putting money into corporations, but it's still generous. And today, I want you to think about your gift-giving habits. It might feel like you're stuck on some treadmill where you're just checking things off of lists and giving things to people just because you have to, but please remember how generous you are being in the mix. Remember a man named St. Nicholas who was so generous that an entire culture grew up around his name. Remember the people back in ancient Rome who used this harvest festival of Saturnalia to turn over some of the classism and give gifts to people who were less fortunate. And remember the Magi who traveled some distance to give gold, frankincense, and myrrh, gifts that seem entirely inappropriate for a baby, but they gave them to a man who they understood would be king one day. And this whole conversation has been about very tangible gifts, things that you can wrap up. But I want to thank each and every one of you for the gifts that you give me. You watch these videos. You create a community. I want to thank you so much for the gifts that you give to one another. If you have missed any of the previous videos, you can click there and get them, or you can click up there and subscribe. I love you all. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.